things which we discussed earlier. Uh, we have already discussed the difference between the raster graphics and uh, vector graphics and scientifically we have seen their differences and how the raster graphics are created as well as vector graphics are created we discussed earlier. And we have discussed about the concept of color lookup table and color representation and display systems. And uh, we have discussed about the different type of resolutions last time. And the main concept of color lookup table and also why we need color lookup table and how we can compress the data uh, lossy less manner without losing any information by using color lookup table. We discussed last time. And uh, we discuss about this raster and vector devices as well. Now, when we look at the ra graphics, we can separate them into raster graphics and vector graphics. The same way you can have raster devices and vector devices. And I have given you the separation of this raster uh, display and the vector display, and I have uh, described the some examples. I have described some examples of this vector displays and raster displays. Now, when we look at the graphics display devices, like raster display and vector display devices, uh, we also have this liquid crystal display and plaster panel display type of display systems, and head mounted display and uh, uh, LED display type of display systems are available. Those are using different technologies, right? Those are using different technologies. And uh, uh, when we look at these type of display devices, they are properties also and the way of operation is also different. Now, today I'm going to tell you a fundamental display mechanism of uh, CRT or cathode ray tube display system cathode ray tube display system and we can uh, commonly discuss about it uh, in with respect to the raster and vector. Now when we look at the cathode ray display system, <coughs> this is uh, uh, commonly available in all day monitors as well as uh, in television systems uh, what we had long ago. Nowadays, we are having this flat panel and the LCD, LED type of display systems. Uh, <clears throat> so that is what we are going to see to understand how the display is appearing on the screen, right? How the display is coming onto the screen. Now, that is what we see as graphic, right? That is what we see as a graphic uh, on the uh, display <coughs> or monitor. Now, when we consider about all day monitor with the backside and all, you may have thought about what is available inside them. Actually, this is the cross section of the display system. <clears throat> In there, you have uh, this type of uh, small uh, area, which is very high energetic area, high energetic area and high voltage area, high voltage and high ener energy area. Here you have uh, several parts available and this area you have a kind of a gun called electronic gun. That is not a gun like shooting people. This is uh, this, uh, this particular gun shoot not bullets, electrons. That's why we call that gun as electronic gun, right? So that gun shoot electrons I think uh, in your sire, in your uh, O level and before O level sciences, you may have learned about electron. Normally, atom is available around that atom, the electrons are orbiting around the uh, atom. <coughs> now, this electron gun shoot these type of electrons, right? This electron, uh, electronic gun shoot these electrons onto the screen. Now, these electrons are coming with a very high velocity, speed, and hit onto the screen. Now, I'm going to take one particular place, right? One dot or one particular pixel. How this happened? Carefully listen. 
right? Now, this is one method of working, right? That this is one method of working or generation of pixel color. What I'm going to tell here is that how you create a dot on the display. This is one method of creation of that dot. There are many other methods. LED, there is another technique. Plasma panel this is another technique. LCD it is another technique. Techniques are different, but anyhow, here we are going to say how that cathode ray tube generated dot, one dot. Same way, there are different mechanisms that they, those display devices create one dot, right? Right. So here we have some plates, horizontal deflection plates and vertical deflection plates are there. Horizontal and vertical deflection plates are there and the electron gun shoot these electrons onto the screen. That is how it is going to happen. Now the screen here you have the screen. <coughs> Here you have the screen. This screen contain. This screen contain. Uh, a special material called phosphor material. Organic material called phosphor. Now that is also a kind of a compound, right? It is a compound, phosphor compound. Now when the electrons are coming to the phosphor material and hit on to the phosphor atom, that is the place where we generate the energy or the color. That is how we see one dot. Let's see how it is going to happen. <coughs> Now, as I mentioned earlier, there are some plates available. Here we call these things as horizontal plates and vertical plates, right? Now, again, you can see a cross section of a monitor. Electron gun is available here. Deflection uh, plates are available, yokes are available, and electronic beam is, electron beam is going and deflect and targeted one particular location on the screen one particular location on the screen and there is a shadow mask also right there is a shadow mask also available now this one we call it this is a cross section of a shadow mask before that particular uh, electron beam hit onto the phosphor atom or phosphor's coated screen these electrons are to go through this uh, shadow mask the shadow mass generate small uh, holes. The shadow mass provide small holes to penetrate, to go through these holes and hit onto the screen. Right? That is how it's going to happen. Right? Now let's see what is going to happen here. So the electron, what, whatever the electron, now we are going to take one electron, right? One electron go through this uh, path with high velocity. Can hunga high yengi yanne me electron gan ne shoot karar pas high yengi anwari. Right? So those electrons are moving faster. Now that electron carries energy. When it is moving faster, means it carries energy. Normally, that is a kinetic energy. Electron carries kinetic energy. Chalaka shakti Chalaka shakti. And hit on to the phosphor molecules. Phosphor molecules are available here. Now, why are we having this shadow mass? Let me tell you that. Shadow mass always having some holes. If Electrons are coming through holes that can penetrate. Otherwise, those electrons, otherwise, uh, if it hit on the shadow mass, it will stop. 
no collision happening therefore these holes will target one different dots on the screen right these uh, holes inside this particular mask targeted small small dots on the screen so these post patterns are in the relaxation stage most of the uh, postpers collide with this electron and absorb that kinetic energy to the post pattern right because the electron is coming with very high energy think about this someone is running towards you someone is running towards you and he will collide with you i mean la hage happen no hai yenge bhi what will happen you also move right you also move means you are also push somewhere and you are also getting some kind of energy to move that energy is not generated by you he has given you that energy right now here there the post pattern cannot move any place what happen is the post pattern gets this energy kinetic energy and due to that energy this post pattern becomes unstable and the electrons are the, the, there are electrons available within the post pattern these electrons are hitting onto the another electron and due to that higher energy those electrons are going to the higher energy states right so that is what we called as excited states those states we called as it excited states normally we know that in a molecule you have electrons orbiting around it. molecules right electrons right here also we have electrons now what will happen here is what this electron coming with high energy collide with one of these electron and these are orbits based on their energies once it hit on this type of electron this will go up state higher energy state somewhere here it will go to some kind of a high energy state somewhere here then what will happen here is then this uh, this higher energy state uh, electron will get unstable now it will try to come back to the normal relaxation stage so in that situation that because of unstable stability it will release that energy as optical energy and now you are getting color as h view that is the energy you are getting as a color when this higher energy electron who has gone up level coming down by releasing that energy that energy you see as colors on the screen <coughs> one dot right therefore this is the phenomenon happening within the uh, computer monitor right this is the phenomenon happening in the computer monitor and so each and every dot should be eliminated each and every dot should be eliminated there are many many dots available on the screen now electron gun emit one electron by one electron electron ek ek thamai ya emit karanne shoot karanne when that electron gun emits electrons one by one those electrons come and hit on to the screen different molecules right then these molecules convert from exciting singlet state to exciting triplet state sometimes called intersystem crossing as well sometimes uh, the relevant energy really is happening from one to place to another place in between states also they are then that dropping down will not create this type of uh, color so that also you have to remember now here we can see that one <coughs> now as i mentioned earlier the here you have the horizontal deflection plate and vertical deflection plate 
Now, what is the purpose of having this deflection plate? Let me discuss it. The electrons are moving here. Electrons, what is the, the charge of the electron normally? What type of charge is carried by an electron? Electron charge Can R open a work game? R open a kilo de kalti no nebula. What is the charge? Positive charges and negative charges. What type of charge uh, that electron normally carries? There are positive and negative, those are there, but what is? Yes, that is a negative charge, right? Rina R open a guinea, right? When negative charge is moving in this direction, When negative charge is moving in this direction, that is equivalent to positive charge moves to the other direction. So when the positive charge goes the other direction means it's like current. Current moves the other direction. Now this is the postcoded screen. Now I'm not going to discuss about that uh, mask here. You have to understand that mask is to target all the electrons coming one by one to one of the targeted dot, right? Targeted dot. Now the electron beam comes like this. Electron beam comes like this and targeted some kind of a dot on the screen, postcoded screen. Now, ultimately, here we have focusing system which will focus all these electrons. And here we have deflection plate, vertical and horizontal deflection plates. When these electrons come here, this electron gun emits high energetic electron. This horizontal deflection plate and vertical deflection plates applies magnetic field. Now, you may have learned about this uh, in grade 9 or 10 in your A levels or levels. Uh, Fleming's uh, uh, that rules, right? Fleming rules. Can you remember the Fleming's rules? Fleming surat name. If the current is moving one direction, if the magnetic field is another direction, the movement of the, the bar is happening in the other direction, this one, right? That way of uh, theorems are there. Therefore, these deflections are happening due to the magnetic field applied on these deflection plates. Therefore, what you have to understand is the horizontal deflection plates, horizontal deflection plates, the magnetic field is this way and it will move that electron up and down. Vertical deflection plate, this way it's available, the magnetic field going down no going up then that will move the electron horizontally so the vertical deflection plate the magnetic field corresponds that to move that electron vertically this way horizontal magnet uh, that deflection plate do the movement of the electron up and down. That is what happening in the uh, that is what happening in this type of CRT display or monitor. Right? And finally finally uh, when you look at it when you look at it these are the excited uh, or the energy states available, energy states available within the atom. 
postpartum. When it hit on to the postpartum, electron which is available somewhere here goes up to this one by absorbing some energy. Then that is unstable. Therefore, that electron again comes back to this level by by releasing that energy already taken from the moving electron. Or electron e chala ka shaktiya, rasayana ka shaktiya kpe laata mai, minne mei electron e aima metan vayadhi nichi electron e ulte aana. Uta shakti pa mao, matta pa gata. Navatatte shakti matta ma palha te rava, hara energy e ka eliyata daal. E eliyata daal ni energy e ka, e shakti eliyata daal ni, all of shakti energy. So that energy will be released by the electron as a uh, as optical energy. So finally you are getting optical energy. It's finally you are getting that energy as optical energy. So then optical energy what you receive will be received as a color. Now based on the energy, the different colors are generated. So different energies are corresponds to have different colors. May a cake color with the in a physics karamandan no make a cake colors when us in the eva gate in a tarangaya. So those colors are different from each other based on their wavelengths. So these wavelengths are take, taken by these colors based on the energy what they have, right? So different energies are released by different post atoms and then you are getting different colors. That is how you are getting colors. And that is happening from the energy what you are getting from the electron. So the different electrons are shooted down to the screen with different velocity or kinetic energy. So based on the energy what you are giving to the electron when you are shooting, that energy will be absorbed by the post And that will correspond to have different colors. Therefore, you have to understand this electron gun should know when there is a kind of a point to be generated with a different color, what is the what is the velocity you have to give and what is the energy you have to give for the electron. And deflection plates are responsible to create different magnetic fields to deviate that particular elect electron to the targeted place. Or point that particular electron to the targeted place. That is how it going to happen here, right? <coughs> Normally, these phosphors are characterized by color, right? Normally, these phosphors are characterized by color and persistent, which is time for the emitted light to decay to 10% of initial intensity. And but we, what we are looking at here is that how much of time taken, how much of time taken to decay that full energy to 10% of that energy. If it is happening very quickly, if the decay of that or re release that of that energy is happening very quickly, that means we have to shoot another electron before it decays. <laughs> So therefore, there are two types of postpers available. The postpers with decay happening slowly, postpers with decay happening very quickly. If the postpers with uh, decay happening quickly is there, then that one need to change that point very frequently. With high frequency, you have to change the dot. That means you have to shoot the 
shoot electrons to that particular dot very very quicker manner or higher frequency so that we call as low persistent phosphor right low persistent phosphor so therefore because of because of that the the dot is changing rapid uh, very quickly those phosphor is very good for the animation animation the, the content is changing right the, the things are changing on the screen the things are very quickly changing on the screen therefore for animation you need low persistent post you have to have high refresh rate also another way refresh rate means how many times per second you are changing the screen that depends on how many times you are changing one dot on the screen right how many times per second you are changing one dot on the screen when you are changing one dot per second is high that means it's good for animation that or change vela deva tak tak gala balanna puluwa smooth if the changes are happening very slowly within this dots changes means one dot another dot in the same place that means one color another color changes that means high persistent phosphor e kiyara energy ek adu vela yan bindu 10 30 10 wage adu wenna godak vela ga that low high time higher time means not even second maybe less than second but it is a considerable amount of time if you have such amount of time if you have such amount of time this high persistent phosphor right this high persistent phosphor gives you right high persistent phosphor gives you uh, low refresh rate you don't have to change the screen rapidly or very quickly that is uh, not good for animation therefore understand that in the lcd uh, or ld uh, what you call uh, crt monitors you have uh, per, phosphor material and the phosphor material has two type uh, types low persistent and high persistent low persistent phosphor very quickly change uh, decay and therefore you have to refresh the screen very quickly and uh, low persistent phosphor you have to do it very slowly uh, therefore not good for animation now sometimes when you are having monitor even this monitor in the lcd led or whatever the monitor the refresh rates are there refresh rates means how much of times per second how many times per second you are changing your screen so the led lcd or whatever the screen you are changing the screen per second that is what we call as refresh rate generally refresh rates stand in between 50 uh, and 60 hertz hertz means per second per second right per kapparak tulti 50 wara change vena ek it's a very fast rate <coughs> nowadays these monitors are having around 75 hertz per second 75 hertz per second that means 75 times it will change now can we change the whole set of dots or the pixels that amount of time per second that is the problem now you can you even cannot think about it <laughs> because 75 times per second this screen is changing you cannot see that's faster you this particular screen should work to give the smooth animation can you see these animations right the changes are happening this line right now when we talk about uh, we know that the scanning scanning means completing the screen one frame to generate one picture on the screen how to generate that picture right 
to generate one picture on the screen, we have, should know how to generate that picture on the screen. Now that refresh rate means within one second that number of pictures are generated on the screen. Within one picture you have large number of dots. Within one picture you have large number of dots. Now there are two types of scanning methods available. There are two types of scanning methods available. One we called as random scan, other one we called as raster scan. Right? One item we called as random scan, the other one we called as raster scan. Now, let's see what is that scanning is. Now, when you want to create one screen or one frame on the screen that is within one for example, out of this particular scanning, 75 pictures are to be generated on the screen or 60 pictures, I assume you this one, 60 pictures are to be generated on the screen within one second. pictures attack. I'm talking about how to create one picture. To create one picture, that electron gun has to cover entire screen, all the pixel rows and all the pixel columns. You have to cover entire screen, row by row, top to down, bottom. <coughs> right? Top to bottom. You have to cover entire screen, top to bottom. In that situation, when you are covering entire screen top to bottom, line by line, you have to go from left to right also, left to right also. In that situation, large number of pixels are available, the width size of pixels, height size of pixels are available. So this electron gun has to target many electrons and very fast manner those are to be emitted by targeting different places and the electron but it, magnetic fields are also to be changed according to the location what we have done. Therefore this mechanism of shooting electrons to cover entire area we call as scanning. Scanning of the screen means entire area we are covering by shooting electrons or eliminating those pixels or dots. Uh, illuminating those electrons or the, those dots or pixels. When we are illuminating them, you see the colors. Then we do not see any dark areas, right? Blanks are not there. So therefore, what we have to understand is that when we are shooting electrons onto the screen, when we are shooting electrons onto the screen, these are penetrating through these uh, mask, shadow mask, and targeting some kind of a phosphor screen, and we are generating some kind of a color on the screen. <coughs> now, when we look at the collision, when we look at the collision, it will generate some kind of energy and uh, that energy emits color. Within one second, you will have to create large number of such rounds, go up and down, go up and down 72 times. It's very hard to create entire pictures this such. Therefore, what these uh, electron gun do is, the 60 hertz is working, but it will go up and down 60 times per second. But jumping from one line to another line by keeping some of the odd lines and even lines. So jumping first odd lines, then even lines. Then one picture will be created by using two up and down cycles. Two up and down cycles needed to create one picture. That is how it will be done. That we call it as interlace scanning. Interlace scanning. That means you are omitting one by one. And next part cycle you cover the 
the omitted things. Omitted lines will be covered. First odd lines, then the even lines. That is what we call as uh, interlace scale. Now, in the random scan, now I talk about raster scan. Raster scans need to scan the entire area to generate a picture. The random scan, that is not the way, in the vector CRT, vector cathode ray tube monitor, or vector monitors, they are not scanning entire area. Instead of what they do is, they point only to the areas what they want to eliminate. Illuminate some if they want to illuminate some kind of an area or some lines or areas, that particular part only be illuminated. We illuminate only those parts. Right? We illuminate only those parts. Now, when we have these parts, for example, suppose that you want to illuminate A to B, you want to illuminate, illuminate A to B. So the electron gun only draw the pixels or dots within this line pixels. That's how the random scan works. So other dots will not be shooted with any electrons. <coughs> That's how the vector devices work. They don't care other part. They are not going to illuminate it. Only A to B pixels will be illuminated. Uh, to do that, that electron gun should be given some kind of a knowledge about it. What are the locations to be shoot? Therefore, this random scan need intelligent electron gun, right? This random scan need intelligent electron gun to calculate and shoot only the locations you want to shoot. So in random scan system that also called vector or stroke writing or calligraphic electron beam directly draw the picture like that. So when we look at the computer graphic system can be random scan or raster scan, right? In random scan system, normally we call uh, that as vector scan, stroke writing, calligraphic electron beam directly draw the picture. So advantages of random scan is you don't have to scan all the dots. Very high resolution can be generated and limited only by monitor. Easy animation, just draw a different positions only you have to do because you, that is no. In the raster scan, you have to go up and down always with different velocities, then different colors will be generated. Go up and down always, not like random scan. Let's see what are the disadvantages. And it re requires only little memory because that need to keep only the dots within that line or curve or something. When you look at the disadvantages, it requires intelligent electronic beam, as I mentioned earlier, processor controlled electronic beam. Limited screen density, uh, limited screen density before the flicker, can't draw complex images here. And you have limited color capabilities as well because it is very expensive. Right, those are the disadvantages. And you don't have to cover entire area also in the random scale. Now here you can see some illustrations shown to to, so to give understanding about how the raster scan work because each, each and every line need to be scanned to generate one picture. In the vector scan or random scan, only the areas what you want to illuminate, you spot them. That is what we call as vector CRT, vector scan. Okay. Normally, raster scan device scans the screen from top to bottom in regular pattern. Uh, this is the common TV technology. 
the computer normally television system also use this raster scan <coughs> now someone can ask do you have these scans in modern day monitors like uh, modern day monitors means led monitors lcd monitors yes you have these things but you are not having the electronic card here that mechanism again happening the same way it's happening without electronic card illumination is happening illuminating of these leds right or maybe uh, the locations of the lcd so the electronic being is turned off or no off so that images collection of dots which are painted on the screen row by row here in the raster scan as i mentioned earlier now there's a question how to tell the electronic beam when to turn on or off normally uh, last time i also i told you the picture what we want to create on the screen is available within the graphical memory in such situation for each and every dot if it is a raster graphic raster monitor each and every dot contains some kind of a memory data graphic memory data for that particular location of pixel so that particular memory we call as frame buffer or sometimes it may be called as big map each memory location corresponds for one particular pixel and that based on that pixel color value you shoot an electron to that place that is what happened so display processor scan memory and then turn electronic beam on and off depending on the bit zero or one when it goes to the end it will turn off and come back like that it will happen so here we can see how at how this interlace scan works normally first scan does the odd or even lines and then it scan the odd lines therefore to create one picture one frame it takes two cycles up and down up and down two cycles are taken to create one picture that what that's what we call as interlace scanning but here the gaps are not seen because the, until the other cycle decays you can go up and down but anyhow this is faster and reduce the workload to be done reduces the workload to be done and the picture you cannot guess whether it is changing or not our in our naked eye right now there is another thing to be considered now we have to understand this refreshing changing of the screen is happening within one second many times we cannot see at the same time the i told you to create one picture on the screen to create one picture on the screen you have a memory in the computer graphical memory area or frame buffer now this frame buffer if you keep the frame buffer as it is for one second that means all 60 pictures are or all 30 pictures if you are taking the 60 hertz means go up and down 60 the 60 times no? when you go up and down 60 times you are creating 30 pictures because in the interlace scanning two times you have to go up and down to create one picture therefore 30 pictures <clears throat> so there are no 30 pictures then you have only one picture per one whole second that means 30 pictures are replaced by one picture that is not what we want suppose that pictures are changing one by one within one second one cycle you have to have one picture generation is done and next picture is replacing that memory now the memory should work very fast of course not only the electronic gun the memory also need to work very fast so the memory need to be changed graphical memory need to be changed very quicker than that. now suppose that you have 640 to 480 resolution right 
if suppose if you take these pixels is in on state or off state assume that uh, the resolution is uh, on 614 to 480 resolution it's right? 614 uh, 614 to 480 resolution then all together if you take the number of pixels available uh, Suppose pixel is either on or off. On or off means black or white. In other words, it can be considered as black or white. One pixel can be in black state or white state, binary. Then one bit is enough for the memory. White non occur. Black non zero. Colors they kind of very easy. Suppose the memory resolution width is 640, height is uh, at, uh, the screen resolution or the space resolution. Uh, 480 rows are there, 640 columns are there. <coughs> width 640, height 480. That is the resolution. If you have that resolution, if you have that resolution, we can multiply these two together, right? Right, we can multiply these two together and generate and generate uh, this number of bits, right? This number of bits and uh, it need this now that means this number of pixels are there for each pixel you have to allocate one bit therefore ultimately this number of bits are there when you multiply with 480 into 640 you get this one now if you divide it by eight bits that means this number of bits eight bits this number of bytes are needed for the memory it's 38400 bytes needed for one screen one picture within the frame buffer Picture a KTN, a CLUMA dot may memory KTA than a pike a bit take a gun, pixel head. Right, that's what we are. One bit per, per pixel, and altogether this much of memory needed for creation of one picture. And sometimes we can allocate several bits per pixel for the color images. You have to have 30, uh, 24 bits per pixel, that is RGB, three colors. And eight bits per pixel, also gray type of thing you can have. In such situations, you uh, if the uh, color levels are 256, that means that one pixel can be in one of these 256 color levels. And so the memory requirement is 1024 into 725. Uh, suppose that resolution is this one, not this one. Then the memory requirement is 768 kilobytes needed for one frame. 768 kilobytes here if you look at the kilobytes it means it is less maybe three kilobytes or less three kilobytes or less or no 38 kilobytes 38 kilobytes also. now here 768 kilobytes per one pix uh, one frame now let's see how much of faster manner this memory to be read and write. This memory to be read and write, how fast? Because we need to change that content, uh, maybe 60 times or 30 times per second. This memory need to be changed within 30 times per second. As well as we have to read this memory 30 times per second. So that speed we need within the memory. So let's see the speed requirement for this memory access. Suppose that 60 hertz, we read uh, 1024 into 768, 768 kilobytes, kilobytes, this much of bytes or bits available. Kilobytes, this much, this much of kilobytes, Multiplied by 1024 means bytes. 
byte means 8 bits so this much of bits are available 768 kilobytes can be represented in this much of bits or this much of bytes that means multiplication of this one into this one so we need to read seven seven uh, 186,432 bytes within within one divided by 60 seconds time one divided by 60 if it is a 60 hertz that means you are you have to assume that 60 times per second you are changing the screen that means you have to divide this number now you have to read this number of bytes 60 times right within one second right one second 60 times you have to read that means 60 times 60 times of this particular memory to be read within one second therefore one upon 60 into this number within one second you have to read this much into 60 number of bytes then you are getting per byte how much of time needed to read one byte how much of how much of time needed that means 786432 into 60 should come here one upon that number then that amount of time needed to read one byte that is what we are representing here. so one byte in two into 10 to the power negative eight seconds or maybe 20 nanoseconds you have to allocate to read one byte within 20 nanoseconds means 20 into 10 to the minus negative 9 seconds needed to nanoseconds means very 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 small very very small time to read one byte that faster is needed within this memory nowadays we are having uh, ddr5 type of memories for the graphic memory to faster memories to hold this memory graphical memory so the scanning rate also the same uh, when the, with respect to the scanning rate this memory speed also you have, there are relationship in between memory speed and the scanning rate or the refresh speed if you are having very high, very high scanning rate with very slow uh, memory speed that is not going to match and the other thing is if you are having very uh, high memory speed with very slow uh, refresh rate it works it works but not worth not worth means there is no need of such faster memory for that type of display so in color crt you have to understand in color crt over color monitors there are three electronic guns we are using rgb guns they are representing different speeds of different speeds of uh, uh, electrons onto the screen and through the shadow mass this hole they are coming and hitting to three different phosphors the color crt is you have three types of phosphor red phosphor green phosphor and blue phosphor three types of phosphors are available the, those phosphors are those electrons are targeting uh, relevant post patterns also right that is how uh, we can discuss about these display devices we have uh, learned the concept of scanning concept of the display devices to create graphics on the screen we have discussed about the flicker rate or the refresh rate how much of time per second that screen is changing and what's the relationship between the memory and the flicker rate and we have discussed about how that computer monitor works as well a generic monitor works and those concepts we have discussed
Now here we have another type of display devices here. Yeah? Those display devices we called as uh, you know 3D display devices, stereo glasses are also there. So what is happening in the stereo glasses? Normally when uh, all of you have some kind of experience uh, with this 3D, uh, uh, 3D screens, right? 3D screens. Are there people, are there anyone, are there any students who have not got any uh, experience with 3D cinema or 3D screen? Are there students who have not been to 3D cinema or 3D uh, television? 3D television, or 3D cinema, have you all been to this 3D cinema? SK Karna Ratna. Hello? SK Karna Ratna. Yes, sir. Okay. You have been to the 3D cinema, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Where did you go? Savoy or the uh, MC or whatever the place? Where did you go? MC. MC, okay. Now, when you go to 3D cinema, is it normal cinema or special cinema? I think it's special cinema. What, what do you get as uh, special thing? How it different from normal cinema? When you go to normal cinema hall and 3D cinema hall, what do you get as special things? Can't you remember? I can't discuss it. No, what, what do you get uh, as special thing? Not discuss it with me. Are you getting different things then? Uh, normal cinema, some equipment or something like that. You can see three D, you know, third dimension because the, the some when sound the, uh, picture. Yeah, sound and picture you see, right? You see, and the, when the ball is coming, it see uh, something like you. It comes to you, right? It comes out from the screen, like right? Screen taking earlier, you know, again, you down the source, can you know, earlier, you know, again, you Right? And then pain right? What I'm asking is, uh, have you got something different? That means you see difference. Yes, see. How do you see that difference? Do you get some kind of a different equipment there? Viduranga? Uh, oh, sir. What, is, what do you get? Uh, yeah, yeah. They are giving a glass to wear, right? If you remove that glass, what do you what you what can you see? That is kind of you know not burn. Uh, not uh, what do you call uh, blur type of thing? Blur, right? Blur. Oh, blur effect is there. Oh. If you remove that glass, when you wear that glass, you can see 3D, right? Am I correct? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. If you go to the cinema, look at, remove that glass and see you see some kind of a blur and when you wear it you see the 3d and the things are coming out now normally we, in the class we are doing small experiments to show that particular thing that is the kind of a psychological effect available within human mind and we have two eyes two eyes human system visual system but two eyes from these two eyes, you are getting two pictures. These two eyes are given with two pictures. Api me nikam balna kote manusya diha api ta ekama manusya ge pintura dekak me eyes dekatai na. Then we send that two signals to the brain and 
process it. When we are processing, we see that whether it is near or far away or something. If you close one of the eye and if you have two fingers like this, it's very hard to catch whatever the place you want. After coordinate Karaganda there. The same thing is available here. When we are having these glasses, what that glass do is glass filter out, glass filter out, glass filter out one picture, glass filters one picture. and produce one picture to the other eye. Therefore, what this glass do is actually on the screen you see the blur image. The blur image is not there actually. There are two images available on the screen. There are two different images available on the screen, slightly different images, slightly different images based on the view angle of two eyes. You take two different, slightly different images from the same. Same thing will be done by this glass. What it do is, there are two slightly different images available on the screen. From the left eye, this one of the images blocked, other image is going through. Right eye, the image which has seen from this left eye will be blocked, other image will be passed. <coughs> These glasses we call as polarization glasses. There's a, this, a technology used to produce that. These glasses can block one of the pole um, image and then another image from the other one. Then what we can see is two pictures are coming to two eyes and we see 3D. That is what we call as stereoscopic vision, stereoscopic vision. So stereo glass is creating the effect artificially onto your eyes, stereoscopic vision. <coughs> then we see the depth information information about the depth will come from that one. Is that clear and understood? Yes or no? Screen glass glass Right into it. Therefore, slightly different, two pictures are coming to your eye based on the positions what we have, and then that will be the thing we see as stereoscopic vision. Okay, so that is about how the stereoscopic vision or 3D vision is happening. And raise down your hand. Try to get that experience by going to one of the 3D cinema and do these experiments and see the blur image and also remove the thing and take one eye and see and like that you can turn it and see so many things you can do, right? Try to do those things when you go to the cinema next day or the people who have not been there, you can try it out. Okay, so the same thing is available within the head mounted display. You are two images are given to you and you will see that as 2, 3D, right? That is the same concept. That is what we call as stereoscopic vision, stereoscopic vision. And there are some graphic hard, hard, hard copy output devices available like printers, dot metric printers are normally printing the graphic by using collection of dots. They use the concept of tithering normally, reduce the complexity. <coughs> Line printers are there, they print line by line. And inkjet printers are using the thermal, that is a thermal printer, uh, distribute the co colored ink on this paper. And laser printers are raster printing devices uh, that will use a dot pattern and uh, the dots are 
generated magnetic uh, through magnetic field and plotters are vector devices normally these are vector devices cadbed plotter and trump plotter they will print only the required arcs and lines and whatever the things available other areas will not be covered but here these uh, printers try to cover whole area when they are printing things and uh, when you look at those output devices earlier what we discussed now here they have input devices like mouse joystick digital tablet and touch pa pa pads and uh, drawing tablets are nowadays available drawing tablets are used to draw the things on the screen you know, modern day graphics are uh, designed as normal graphics on the modern day tablets and uh, 3d scanners are there 3D scanners and normal scanners, data gloves, 3D mouses, so many different uh, input devices are nowadays available for the computer. Devices. For the gaming, you can use these type of game, uh, joysticks and there are some tennis playing, cricket playing, that type of graphic input devices are also there. And when we come to this uh, computer graphic uh, software, there are different software available, two categories available, because of packages available like graphic packages, 3D Studio Max, Maya, uh, <coughs> like uh, Adobe Photoshop, Corolla type of software, and also graphic programming libraries available. The graphic programming libraries, so application programming interfaces available, OpenGL, Java 3D, VR, ML, Pigs, uh, X3D, all these things are becoming uh, programming libraries where you can generate uh, graphics by programming. Here, uh, 3D Max Maya type of softwares are also generated by using this OpenGL and many other technologies available as libraries. And with that, I will stop today's session. I'm going to take only one hour today and uh, uh, we'll go in this way later. We can catch up with the more things. And uh, next day, I want to start uh, uh, a small uh, lab session and I told you to come with the Photoshop installed machines next day. We'll do some exercises to refresh your knowledge about Photoshop. I know that some of you have covered that one and the people who came through A-levels directly, I know that some you have not got any experience there, but we will do the, those things later. And uh, okay, I'll share the presentation to your uh, group mail, right? I will share the presentation to your group mail that I will do. And with that, I will stop here. And if you have any other questions, you can ask now. Uh, drop down your hand, Madhushani. Any questions? Since there are no questions, therefore, I'll stop here. Right, I'll stop here and good night. And uh, let's meet uh, next week again, right? Okay. Good night, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, sir. Good night, sir.